business, weather, and what's trending. The latest headlines continue right now. Former elections manager in Colorado striking a plea deal over tampering allegations. Fox's Matt Napolitano has the story. Sandra Brown agreeing to plead guilty to attempting to influence a public servant of felony and official misconduct as part of an agreement with Colorado prosecutors. Authorities say Brown, a former elections manager, was present when Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters made a copy of a hard drive during an update of voting equipment in May of last year. State elections officials became aware of the breach when photos and videos of confidential system passwords were posted to social media. Peters, a known promoter of conspiracy theories involving voting machines, is currently facing several charges which she claims are politically motivated. Matt Napolitano, Fox News. An example of how every vote counts. A Connecticut State House race is coming down to a single vote. As we hear from Fox's Lisa Lacerra. The initial election night tally in the Southington State Rep race between Republican Tony Morrison and Democrat Christopher Polis was tight, with Polis holding a six-vote lead. A mandatory recount narrowed the gap even further to a single vote. Then local election officials discovered they forgot a sealed packet of ballots which couldn't be read by machine. The two candidates had to report to town hall to watch those six ballots be counted. The result left Polis ahead by a single vote. The result certified when Day by the Secretary of the State's Office. Lisa Lacerra, Fox News. After three years of trying a Democrat-led House committee has now gotten access to six years of former President Donald Trump's tax returns. The Treasury Department making those tax returns available to the House Ways and Means Committee after the Supreme Court ruling last week. Former President Trump had, uh, of course, who had announced a 2024 presidential bid earlier this month, had asked the Supreme Court to block the release of his tax records. Stay with us. We have sports coming your way with Eric Messer Smith. This is Fox News Headlines 24 7 only on Sirius XM Channel 115. Fox News Headlines 24 7, 5 and 35 best every hour. The latest in sports is coming up next. Every 15 minutes with the latest headlines. America is listening to Fox News headlines 24 7. Sirius XM Channel 150. It looks like the long awaited expansion of the college football playoff will happen starting with the 2024 season. ESPN reporting that the Rose Bowl has agreed to the updated proposal, which, according to the report, was the last step in starting the larger playoff in 2024 instead of when a new TV deal was negotiated for the 2026 season. Beginning in two years now, the playoff will expand from four teams to 12, with the field comprised of the six highest ranked conference champions and six at large teams based on the college football playoff rankings. Mickey Joseph, who was the interim coach at Nebraska this season and is still on the staff, was arrested in Lincoln on suspension of strangulation and third-degree domestic assault charges. Joseph has been placed on administrative leave by Nebraska. The Cornhuskers won three and six under Joseph before hiring former Panthers coach Matt Roll last week to take over the program. Florida backup quarterback Jalen Kitna was arrested on Wednesday. Charges of distribution of child exploitation material and possession of child pornography. The 19-year-old QB is the son of former NFL quarterback John Kitna. This season, the younger Kitna has appeared in four games for Florida, throwing for 181 yards and a touchdown. He's a redshirt freshman, and the team suspended him indefinitely from the football program. Former NFL star receiver Terrell Owens says he acted in self-defense during an altercation over the weekend with a man in the CBS parking lot in Southern California. Owens said he was speaking with a fan inside the CBS when another man started threatening them. The former Pro Bowl receiver said he went outside hoping to defuse the situation, but the man followed and continued to harass both Owens and the fan he had been speaking with. Owens went on to say that the other man swung at him and he, quote, felt obligated to prevent the aggressor from becoming more violent. It's not clear whether police responded to the incident at the time, and as of now, no one facing any criminal charges. Also, Falcons tight end Kyle Pitts done for the season after having knee surgery Tuesday. Pitts injured the knee in Atlanta's week 11 win over Chicago. That's your sports on Fox News headlines 24-7. I'm Eric Messerschmitt. Eric, thank you. A settlement in Minneapolis stemming from the protests after the death of George Floyd. This is Fox News headlines 24-7. Turn your car into the home flow karaoke 
party with the poppin' road trip and gate. All arrows, all pop. In the SXM app. Free with all trials and popular plans. Shocker provides information on every plan but may not offer every plan available in your area. Any information we provide is limited to those plans we do offer in your area. Contact Medicare.gov or 1-800-MEDICARE to get information on all of your options. Did you pick up the mail, honey? Oh, boy. What's wrong, dear? A ton of junk mail from Medicare insurance brokers. It's open enrollment in the mailboxes, packed with mailers. Are these even real? You know, Tina told me that she and Ed fell for one of these. They thought they got a good deal until they spoke with Ari Parker at Chapter. Ari who? Ari Parker. Apparently, he's this best-selling author and Medicare expert who works at Chapter. So? Honey, most Medicare brokers only work with a few insurance companies. Ari and his team at Chapter search all insurance companies to find the best plan for you. It's why Chapter is rated A-plus by the Better Business Bureau. Tina said to call 800-455-3498. 800-455-3498. That's 800-455-3498. The news you need, the moment you want it. This is Fox News Headlines, 24-7 at 39 past the hour. The city of Minneapolis has settled a lawsuit on behalf of 2020 protesters. Fox's Tom Graham has the details. Well, protesters will split a $600,000 settlement following their treatment by Minneapolis police during the unrest following the 2020 murder of George Floyd. The American Civil Liberties Union made that announcement Wednesday. The city also agreed to curb police responses to lawful protests, including the use of pepper spray and non-lethal projectiles. While there was some looting and fires set during the days-long 2020 demonstrations, Minneapolis forces came under criticism for the response. Tom Graham, Fox News. President Biden is promising a stronger voice for indigenous communities as he announces new funding initiatives for tribal lands. Fox's is Jared Halpern with more from the White House. Speaking at the Tribal Nation Summit, President Biden pledged more federal support for communities he says are facing threats from climate change. Extreme droughts and wildfires, rising sea levels that affect the sources of tribal foods, tribal resources, tribal traditions, tribal ways of life. The president told leaders he's committed to Native Americans having a stronger voice in federal funding and decision making. Together, my entire administration advancing the economic agenda and making historic investments in Indian country. And I might add that they're long overdue. The Biden administration is requesting Congress approve more than $9 billion for the Indian Health Service, providing medical care to federally recognized tribes. At the White House, Jared Halpern, Fox News. The CDC says seasonal flu cases are on the rise in the United States. And Fox's Johnny G. Powers is that story. The most recent data from the CDC shows some states, including New Mexico, Texas, and Tennessee, are in the uppermost range for case numbers on its flu activity map. A swath of the country from Arkansas to Virginia, as well as California, Washington State, Kansas, and Colorado, follow with very high rates. The most recent data also show that hospitalizations for patients with the flu are up from more than 8,700 for the week ending November 12th compared to more than 11,000 the following week. The CDC says the highest hospitalization rates are of those 65 and up, followed by those 5 and younger, and that fewer people have gotten the flu vaccination this year than in previous years. Tanya J. Powers, Fox News. More than two dozen cancer research experts will be meeting in Flint this week. They're trying to figure out whether the Flint, Michigan public water crisis impacted cancer rates in the city. The day-long meeting at Michigan State University's Flint campus Wednesday kicked off what is now being called the Flint Community Cancer Consortium. This new event is the culmination of a years-long activist push to bring attention to cancer concerns after that botched municipal water supply tainted with lead and other contaminants came to light. And Homeland Security with another terrorism bulletin, the seventh since the January 6th Capitol breach. Warnings of potential domestic dangers, including threats to LGBTQ communities, schools, racial and religious minorities, government facilities, infrastructure, and the media. Well, DHS Secretary Alan Hunter Mayorka says extremists are motivated by violent ideologies that pose persistent and lethal threat. Over the summer, Republican lawmakers expressed fear that conservatives were being unfairly targeted by government intel agencies. It is 40.
two past the hour. Time for Fox Business and Hillary Barsky. Stocks ending sharply higher with the Dow exiting out of bear market territory and the major averages closing out the month in the green. Stocks popping after Fed Chair Jerome Powell indicated that the central bank is on track to raise interest rates by a smaller increment at its December meeting. However, he does anticipate ongoing rate hikes to combat hot inflation. The Dow rising 737 points, the Nasdaq up 484, S&P 500 up 122. And shares of business software provider Salesforce are tumbling in the extended session. The company did post higher third quarter 84, S&P 500 up 122. And shares of business software provider Salesforce are tumbling in the extended session. The company did post higher third quarter revenue, but issued a fourth quarter forecast that fell short of expectations and also announced that Brent Taylor, its vice chair and co-CEO, will be stepping down at the beginning of the new year, leaving Mark Benioff as co-founder and other co-CEO to be the sole person at the helm. Discount chain 5 Below posted a decline in profit for its third quarter and made higher costs, but its sales rose sharply and its stock is popping after hours. Business News, twice an hour on Fox News headlines 24-7, I'm Hillary Barton.